In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install and use the Communicator software client. In just a few moments, I will be giving you some web page links. So when these links are displayed on the screen, you may want to pause the tutorial and write them down. The first thing we need to do is to install the Communicator client. So I will launch a browser and go to the Mitel Cloud resource portal. This is at http colon forward slash forward slash astra dot astrausa dot com forward slash training dash resource dash portal. Then scroll down to ClearSpan client apps, docs and downloads, or click on the quick navigation link. There are two installation files, one for Windows and one for Mac. Click on the appropriate link and follow the instructions to run and launch the install file. Click the next button to continue. Read the license agreement and click on the I agree button to continue. Select your install options and click on the next button. Select the destination folder where Communicator will be installed. I will leave the default and click on the next button. You will be prompted for a start menu folder. I will accept the default and click on the install button. When the installation is finished, you will see the message installation complete. Click on the next button and then click on the finish button. The first time Communicator launches, you will need to enter an access URL. If you don't know the access URL, you will need to check with your administrator. Next, enter your username and password. You have the option for Communicator to remember your password and to sign in automatically. When you have made your selection, click Sign In. Contact your administrator if you do not know your username and password. When Communicator opens, you will be prompted to enable Outlook Contact Search. I will click Yes to allow Communicator to search from my Outlook contacts. So let's go through the features. On the left is your present status. Right click on the icon. Here you can change your present status. This is also where you can add or change your photo. Left click on the next icon to display the dial pad. Click on the dial pad numbers to dial a number. If you make a mistake, click on the backspace button. After you have entered the complete number, select the device that will make the call. Your choices are a video call if you and the receiving person have cameras configured. You will also need a headset or microphone and speakers for the audio. The volume control is in the bottom right corner. An audio call. You will need a headset or microphone and speakers. Again, the volume control is in the bottom right corner. Or if you have a desktop telephone next to you, such as the 6867i, you can dial with communicator and talk on your desktop telephone. After the call is connected, you can hang up the call, mute the microphone, put the call on hold, or remove the call from hold, transfer the call, enter the phone number you want to transfer to, and click on the Transfer Now button. You can cancel the transfer screen by clicking on the word Cancel. Add more people, enter the phone number of the person you want to add, and click on the Add button or click on the word cancel to cancel this action. I've shown you how to make a call. Here's what it looks like when you receive a call or chat. You will get a pop-up window. To answer an audio call, you will click on the answer icon. This person needs to speak to Mike Murphy, but he is on the phone. So instead of transferring the call, I will park the call and then send him a chat message so he knows he has another call waiting. To do this, I will click on more choices. This is where you would park a call. Click on Park Call, then click on where you want to park the call. If you select Use My Extension, the person retrieving the call will need to dial your extension number and the pound key. If you select the second option and enter an extension, the person retrieving the call will need to dial that extension number and the pound key. If the extension number belongs to the person retrieving the call, then they only need to press the pound key to retrieve the call. So for this example, the call is from Mike Murphy, and I'm going to park the call on his extension. This way, when he retrieves the parked call, he will only need to press the pound key. I'll let Mike know through a chat message, I've parked a call on his extension. I will demonstrate how to retrieve a parked call in a few minutes. The next icon is Communication History. This will give you a list of incoming calls, 
outgoing calls, or missed calls. If you left click on the entry, the different ways to initiate communication are listed below. Chat, audio, audio on a desktop telephone, and video. If an option is grayed out, that method is not available for that user. If you right click on an entry, you can add that number as a contact. The next icon is contacts. This displays the communicator contacts. You can also search for a person by entering their name. Communicator will then search your own contacts, the telephony directory, which are the users built in the telephone system, Outlook contacts, and if configured, your LDAP directory. To initiate a call or chat, highlight the entry, then click on the icon below. If you right click on the entry, you can select subscribe. That person will then get a pop-up window. Once the person accepts, you can then see their present status and you'll be able to text chat with them. The last icon is My Room. It opens a separate window where you can drag and drop contacts to do a chat or a group chat. And if set up, initiate an audio bridge. Next, I will left click on the communicator icon in the top left corner to open a menu. I'm going to cover these a little out of order, so I'll come back to poll call in just a minute. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to retrieve a parked call. Highlight Retrieved Park Call. Select With Communicator or with the desktop telephone. And then dial the extension number where the call was parked and the pound key. Or if the call was parked on your extension, then just click on the pound key and you will be connected to the parked call. I'll click on Sort Contacts. Two settings I like to add to my communicator are Show Favorites Group and Show Status. Favorites are displayed in your contacts list. Right-click on an entry in the contacts list and select Set as Favorite. Now the entry will be displayed in your favorites group. Show Status adds the words of the present status next to each contact, such as Away or Available. Next I'll click on Preferences. The General tab is where you can set login and confirmation choices. The Audio tab is where you can set up devices and ringtones. The Video tab is where you would configure a video camera. Credentials is where you would set up the My Room audio bridge information. And Add-ins is where you would enable or disable Outlook contact search. Call settings is where you can configure your features. When enabled, the Anywhere feature will ring your mobile phone when your office phone is receiving an incoming call. To enable this feature, click on the Add New Location. Enter the mobile phone number and click on the Save button. Click on the Enable checkbox to enable and activate the feature. Next, click on the Configure Edit button. It is recommended that you select Answer Confirmation. This will prevent work-related incoming calls from leaving a voicemail message in your mobile voicemail box. Then click on Save. You can also delete this number, Location, and then add a new location. So here is how it works. If you were out of the office and someone calls your office number with Anywhere configured and enabled, your mobile phone will now ring when your office phone is being called. If you selected the Answer Confirmation checkbox, after you answer the call, you would press any key on your dial pad to be connected to the incoming office call. Now here's how the poll call option works. When you get back to the office, click on the communicator icon and select Poll Call. This will seamlessly move the call from your mobile phone over to Communicator. Communicator will now have full control of the call, and you will continue the call with your headset or microphone and speakers. In the Call Settings window, you can also set up Remote Office, Call Forwarding, Do Not Disturb, Hide My Number, and Simultaneous Ringing. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. This completes this tutorial on how to install and use the Communicator Software Client.